Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to perfectly harmless words that sound rude to the other country. In part one of this two-part series I looked at seven British words that when spoken aloud might sound utterly filthy to my American viewers. Well in this video we're going to flip that idea on its head and take a look at seven American words that absolutely shocked the bejesus out of me when I first moved to the United States. And so if innuendo is something that you can't live without and you haven't had a chance to subscribe to this channel, do that now! In the meantime, here are seven completely harmless American words and phrases that might sound positively dirty to the British. Number one, hump day. And my British viewers might be thinking, hump day? Is that a particular day of the year in which Americans decide to have a little bit of how's your father? And the answer to that is no, it isn't one day. This is a weekly occurrence. And you're probably thinking, ah, Lawrence, that's why America had such a large post-war population boom. But the truth is, most of us aren't going at it like rabbits. Well, most of you anyway. Because hump day is not some predetermined baby-making festivity. It is, I discovered, a euphemism for a particular day of the week. And that day is Wednesday. In fact, the context under which I first heard about this phrase took place on a Wednesday when an American colleague of mine mysteriously observed, Lawrence, we're over the hump. Well, you might be, Colton, but I'm not and I never will be. But what he explained was that we're over the hump, meaning the middle of the week. And so now you're probably thinking, Lawrence, what is the story with that? And don't ask me that question right now. Instead, here is me two seconds from now with an answer. The term hump day appears to have originated in the United States during the 20th century century. However, sources from the 1950s seem to suggest it was first used to describe the midpoint of a training course. By the 80s, presumably because a training course might typically span Monday to Friday, that meaning had evolved to mean Wednesday and not National Rumpy Pumpy Day. Funnily enough, not every entry on this list came to my attention after I moved to the United States. Some, like Fanny Pack, were an eye-opening feature of my visit to the United States as a child. In fact, when I visited Florida in 1990, the Fanny Pack was at the peak of its powers. As I trotted my way around Disney World, it seemed that 50% of the tourists were wearing one, including myself. But there was a reason that I found this entire experience confusing, and not just because I was being chased by Goofy, but also because back in Britain, a Fanny Pack is known as a bomb bag, which <laughs> is also positively dirty. But to us, not as dirty as Fanny Pack. You see, back in Britain, Fanny, in addition to being a woman's name, is also a euphemism for a woman's... So it just begs the question, why does this travel bag sound so utterly crass on either side of the pond? Back over to Lawrence from two seconds from now with more or less. Although the bag was intended to be worn at the front, its occasional use at the back is what prompted its name in both Britain and America. Just as the term BOM means a person's behind in the former, so does FANNY in the United States. Thanks Lawrence, so Americans don't use the word BOM, or do they? Well, actually, yes. But the word bum in the context of arse was long ago replaced here by the word butt. Instead, Americans might use the word bum to describe a lazy or a homeless person, which itself presents quite a cultural shock because the last thing that you want to do when discussing the very serious topic of homelessness in the United States is to giggle like a five-year-old. I explained everything to them and they still won't let me volunteer. And once again, it just raises the question, what are the origins of this derogatory term? Well, earlier today, I took a deep dive into bomb. While it is possible that the American use of bomb was partly influenced by its British equivalent, it is in fact a shortening of bomber, a 19th century noun brought over from Germany meaning an idle person. Indeed, bomber was popular civil war slang among Union soldiers and may have spread due to the influence of the 200,000 German immigrants who served. So Americans do use the word bomb and in fact things go a little deeper, honestly. Okay, firstly, Britannica gives this as an example of how to use bomb rush. They bomb rushed him from behind. Now, you're new to the country, you hear that as a news headline, what are your first thoughts? Because to me, even if I were to tell you the least rude thing that comes to mind, it would probably be something like, he was given a wedgie. But that isn't where my mind actually goes. My mind actually, you know where my mind actually goes. But amazingly, against all odds, this is not an innuendo. Bomb rush means to attack somebody or something in a forceful or violent way. And so now, 
I'm deeply curious as to how we arrived at this state of affairs. Back to research, Lawrence, again. Like myself, the phrase bum rush appears to be a product of the 1980s. However, it is derived from an earlier 20th century expression, bums rush, which, in a not-so-nice callback to our previous word, meant the forcible ejection of a bum or vagrant from an establishment. <laughs> I thought we'd take a moment to acknowledge the name of a restaurant which, while not containing any rude words, still somehow sounds like it is one. And that restaurant is Fod Rockers. When I first encountered that restaurant, my initial thought was, that sounds like a good word to use when I'm frustrated. As in, oh, Fod Rockers, I got demonetized for making a video about rude words. And when I posted about it on Twitter the other day, it turns out that some of my American followers might have similar thoughts. Indeed, I used the World Wide Web to get answers as to how Fod Rockers became a thing. As ever, the internet is rife with various explanations for the name, including one that's hard to substantiate, that the company's founder wanted to name the restaurant Mother f but was voted down on the grounds that it was not only obscene, but could invite legal action from existing food company Mother Tuckers. But the real reason appears to have nothing to do with food or shagging. It is thought to be a play on Fudpucker World Airlines, a completely made up aviation company. This airline was known among aviation enthusiasts as a spoof of 20th century flight firsts. Like a lot of satire on the internet today, the spoof could quite easily be taken as real, were it not for its telltale captions. These included around the world since it was square and the world's only steam-powered airline. And Fuddruckers is not the only company that made me pause for thought, with special mentions for Jiffy Lube and the Midwestern convenience store Come and Go. <laughs> This is one of those phrases that you can't believe is not rude in any way whatsoever. And if I have to point out why that is, you've lived a very sheltered life and I congratulate you. And the most shocking thing for me was I first heard this phrase during a work lunch when Roy from account said, <laughs> Look at Colton double fisting again! Sorry, what? He's double fisting, double down Roy from accounts. It means to carry a drink in both hands. Oh, right. And you're telling me that nobody else is thinking what I'm thinking? No? Well, our university days were much different then. Anyway, I never did go on another lunch break with that lot. In fact, you might say, inexplicably, that I did this. <laughs> I've lived in the United States for 15 years, and even to this day when I hear the phrase he or she blew me off, my face twitches. Because in Britain, a lot of our innuendo ends with the word off, such as having it off or copping off. So logically, to us, to blow somebody off means to... I'm not finishing that sentence. Suffice to say, my British viewers might still be confused. So to allay that confusion, in the United States, to blow somebody off means a failure to meet that person despite prior arrangements to do so. In other words, you were stood up which is not itself a euphemism. Well, if I've learned anything from these videos, it is that my Aunt Cynthia is very sensitive, but also that we must be careful in the words that we use. While it's true that many words between Britain and America do get lost in the pond, not all of them lead to the embarrassment wielded out by the words on this list. How do I know that? Because I just about lived to tell the tale myself, and for the past seven years I've done everything I can to ignore the LinkedIn request from Roy from accounts. Anyway, now that you've watched this video, it is absolutely vital that you watch part one in this series to discover Seven harmless British words that Americans might find rude. Do that next. And until the next video, goodbye.